Hey everyone, Dr. Fed here. In this quick video, we're gonna be answering the question, how long exactly should we wait to get a hair loss cure? And we're gonna be answering that question by going through all the hair loss treatments currently in development and seeing which one is closest to being FDA approved. So the first one is PP405 and this particular compound satisfies all the criteria to being actually called the cure. It works by inhibiting the mitochondrial pyruvate carrier complex which gets pyruvate into the mitochondria so that it goes uh, undergoes the Krebs cycle for ATP production and by doing that inhibition it actually activates or triggers stem cells in the hair follicles which prompts the regeneration of that area into healthy normal area with normal hair follicles. And I said that this compound satisfies the criteria of a cure because it has all the three criteria. It eradicates the main cause of hair loss. It is durable, so it satisfies the durability criteria. And it requires no maintenance therapy as patients will require no maintenance therapy after taking this treatment to maintain the hair that they had on their scalp. So the data that we have for this compound is 31% of the treatment group had a 20% or more increase in hair density after only eight weeks of treatment. We're still waiting for the phase three to start. So the phase three clinical trials, according to the mother company of this compound, are gonna start in 2026. They just secured the funding. And once it starts, it takes about one year to one year and a half to analyze the data and publish it. And then it takes also one year and a half for the FDA approval if the phase three results confirm what we found in the phase two and phase one results. And so if everything goes into plan with PP405, we're gonna get this product in the market for public use in 2028 to 2029. So this one in particular is a long wait. It's by far the most promising, at least to, in my opinion, but we're gonna wait uh, a long time just to get the phase three results and then to get the company to push the FDA approval if again the phase three results are positive. And so the second one is the Taiwan serum and this one also satisfies the criteria for being called a cure because it acts by the same way as PP405. This one activates stem cells in the hair follicles by a completely different mechanism but it does the same thing as pp405 but the problem with this one is uh, we have dr lin who's responsible for the research behind it with his team in taiwan national university but there's no mother company of this particular compound because it's composed of just unsaturated fatty acids with other compounds so it's uh, this one is very simple to manufacture but that also means that there is no financial interest for any uh, organization to spend the kind of money needed for this compound to undergo uh, clinical trials with vehicle groups. So this one puts me in a little bit of a weird spot where we're not actually waiting for anything because I don't think any organization or, or person has the financial incentive to proceed with doing the research for this particular compound. So. Uh, I don't know with this one, I've heard that Dr. Lin started selling this product, so if you guys are interested and you can watch the full video about it, you can go ahead and just try it. And I'm actually in contact with Dr. Lin right now, and I'm going to give you an update about this particular serum, how to get it, what's the price, and whether there are any research papers currently in preparation. Uh, by Dr. Lin. So I'm gonna give you all the updates regarding this particular serum so keep an eye for it and make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay posted. The next one is Vertoporfin and this one is my personal favorite after the other one that I'm gonna be talking about at the end of the video. So Vertoporfin actually has a completely different mechanism of action. It also, uh, the theory behind Vertoporfin stems from the same regenerative uh, medicine theory that is behind PP405 and the Taiwan serum. So with vertoporfin, you inject this particular compound into the skin after inducing a little bit of trauma, like the trauma that is induced during a hair transplant procedure. And the theory behind it is that vertoporfin inhibits certain pathways like the YAP pathway responsible for turning healthy tissue into scar tissue after being subjected to trauma. Again, like during a hair transplant procedure. And by injecting vertoporfin, it actually inhibits the transformation of that tissue into scar tissue, 
and that prompts the regeneration of that particular area in this case we're talking about the donor area into normal skin with normal hair follicles so the core idea behind it is that you get infinite donor supply so you can undergo as much hair transplant procedures as you want and this uh, pretty much solves the problem of hair loss for 99.99% of people who have the money to undergo a hair transplant in the first place. What's also good about vertoporfin, it's, uh, it's insanely cheap. Uh, one ample of vertoporfin costs around $22. It's a little bit hard to source it right now, but once, and I said this in the video about vertoporfin, once the manufacturing is caught up and it doesn't cost that much to manufacture, you're not gonna have any problem sourcing it and you can actually bring this idea to your hair transplant surgeon if you're gonna do a hair transplant and suggest that he administers uh, vertoporfin into your donor area when harvesting the hairs and um, this won't hurt it can benefit you but it won't hurt and this one is already in the market right now some hair transplant surgeons like Dr. Barghouti who's the one who initiated the whole hype behind vertoporfin also Dr. Bloxham in New York and a lot of hair transplant surgeons in the world right now are administering vertoporfin to their patients either by demand or the surgeon is the one who's proposing the idea in the first place so this one is already in the market I won't really call this a cure because it doesn't eradicate the root cause to hair loss and you need thousands and thousands of dollars to benefit from this product because you need to undergo a hair transplant but this one is a good compound to have in our arsenal to combat hair loss. So the next one is Bruzula which is the brand name of Cliscaterone. We just got the results of the phase 3 clinical trials from which in a press report, the company indicated that they observed a 530% improvement from baseline versus placebo in one study. In a second, completely identical study to the first one, which was also in the phase 3 uh, trial program, the researchers observed a 130% improvement from baseline versus placebo. So there's a big difference between the two studies that were supposedly identical. That's one problem with the compound. The second problem is that in the press report, we only got the results of the efficacy in percentages, which is not good. And so for this one, we got to wait firstly for the extended version of the phase three clinical trial which are gonna conclude in the spring of 2026 and secondly we gotta wait for the efficacy results in target area hair counts the actual raw numbers not these percentages that just drive the stock up right and so those are the two main problems that i have with the compound another thing that i wanted to mention regarding brazula is that we can't actually call Brazula a cure even if we get it approved and I'm gonna tell you the release date or at least the estimated FDA approval date but even if we get it I won't call this a cure because you will have to maintain your hair by regularly administering Brazula so it doesn't satisfy the third uh, criteria for being called a cure which is no maintenance therapy so, so this is not a cure but it's a treatment that can be used as an adjunctive treatment to already existing FDA approved treatments for hair loss like finasteride and minoxidil because it works by a different mechanism. This is a, a competitive antagonist of the androgen receptor. It doesn't work by blocking DHT production like finasteride or promoting hair growth like minoxidil. So it can be used with those two compounds and it can yield an additive efficacy. So this is good, it's, this is a good compound to have in our arsenal, but it won't be called a cure. And we won't have this particular compound ready until the end of 2027. As I said, the extended version of the phase three clinical trial is not concluded yet. It's gonna end in 2026, the spring of 2026, according to the mother company. And once that is concluded, uh, we gotta wait for the company to publish it and then pursue FDA approval, which also takes a lot of time, one year at least. And so the end of 2027 is the earliest date where or when we're gonna be getting Brazula in the marketplace. The next product that I wanna be talking about is GT20029. And this one is what I said is my real number one personal favorite for one particular reason. GT20029 is one of the first 
Protex, a brand new class of drugs, proteolysis targeting chimeras. These class of pharmaceutical drugs use this fascinating system that we have in our cells called the ubiquitin system. This ubiquitin proteasome system tags proteins in the cell for disposal. Once a protein is tagged, proteins that we don't use anymore, that the cell doesn't need anymore, that uh, particular protein, because it's tagged with ubiquitin, is gonna be destroyed by an organelle called proteasome, which you can think of like the planet destroyer from the movie Superman. <laughs> Regarding the latest updates, we have the phase two trial results from GT2009, where we observed a seven hair per square centimeter improvement versus the placebo group in 12 weeks. The phase three trial started already in 2025, and the FDA approval is expected if everything goes into plan and if the phase three trial yields results as positive as the phase two trial, we're gonna be waiting for GT2009 to be in the marketplace in also uh, the end of 2027. And same as Brazula, this one is not a cure because it doesn't satisfy also the third criteria for being called a hair loss cure because you will need to regularly, constantly apply GT20029 on your scalp to keep destroying those androgen receptors on your hair follicles so that DHT doesn't bind to them and doesn't cause miniaturization of hair. All right, and the last, and I think, in my opinion, the most optimist and promising prospect of all hair loss cures is, wait for it, AI. I think artificial intelligence is going to be the one that fabricates a cure for us the earliest. And here's why. In 2026, uh, all data show that we're finally going to be getting AGI. And a lot of companies, biotech companies in Silicon Valley are already using AI models to get idea for new treatments and test their already existing molecules. And so I think it's true that we have all these promising molecules already in development like PP405 or the Taiwan serum or vertoporfin, but I think AI will come up with a new idea that I think will be most beneficial to solve this hair loss conundrum. Let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. And before you go, I've created a subreddit. You can find the link in the description and share your thoughts and share your questions and your journey. And let's make this subreddit a place where every hair loss sufferer can find a community where he can belong easily. And one quick reminder, I also resumed my meeting service. You can book a meeting with me in the link in the description and we can craft a hair loss strategy for your specific type of hair loss if you wish so. And one last important note that I needed to emphasize in this video is that please document your journey. You don't have to share them anywhere. You just need to document your hair loss in the most consistent way. You take consistent photos in the same, under the same lighting conditions with the same phone, hopefully, if that's possible, under this, with the same hair length and especially in the same angle. That's the only way that you can, as objectively as possible, uh, uh, document your hair loss and evaluate for real whether a certain hair loss treatment is efficacious or not and whether your genetics are aggressive and dictate a, an aggressive pattern of androgenetic alopecia or not. This is a very, very, very important note. If you don't do this, you won't really know for sure whether uh, the new treatment that you implemented like finasteride or glasteride or one of these future treatments is even working or not. You won't, you won't be able to tell. And so you need to document your journey in the most objective way possible with, with constant parameters. And that's it. That's what I wanted to, to end the video with. I see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.